Whether you are a baker, plumber, builder or a personal trainer, there is one thing an entrepreneur has to deal with all the time. It is data. According to a survey, two out of three small businesses in USA use Microsoft Excel to manage their data. So it is essential that you know how to use Microsoft Excel in order to stay on top of things. Hi, my name is Chandu and I have been running my own small business for the last 15 years. And in this video, let me share with you four of the most essential Excel features that will help you do more in your small business. This video is sponsored by Connect Team. Connect Team is an all-in-one employee app for the deskless workforce. I'll talk more about them later. But for now, let's take a look at those essential Excel skills. Let's go. Let's look at the case of Monica's cookie business. The business has been growing rapidly. So she hired her friend Joey to help with cookie preparation. But she noticed that Joey has been consistently making some mistakes when preparing the cookies. So she thought it would be awesome if there is a checklist that Joey can tick off every time he is making cookies. These are the 10 items that she wants Joey to check every time he is preparing a batch of cookies. In order to structure this data, you can use tables. Just select the entire data and press Ctrl T to set it up as a table. As our first row is the header, I'm going to select my table has the header option and you will have a table in Excel. You can set up any number of formats on the table. Let's go with this nice orange color formatting. And this is how the table looks. Now for each of these items, Monica wants to have a yes, no answer from Joey. So here you can add a column called checked question mark. And every time you type something in the adjacent column, Excel will automatically extend that column. This is one of those helpful features of table. And as we want to have yes, no options in all these cells, just select all of them, go to the data ribbon and click on data validation. From any value, change this to a list and type the option yes, comma, no. When you click OK, you will now have a little box in the cell through which you can select either yes or no. Joey can now use this to check all the activities when preparing a new batch of cookies. Yay! No more mistakes. Here is a more interesting way of looking at the checklist. You can also check the items using either mouse or keyboard spacebar. This feature is currently not available for all Excel users, but once it is available in Excel 365, you will find that in the insert ribbon as checkbox. Like I said, this is currently in beta, so you can't see it all the time, but eventually it will appear. Another advantage of working with tables when you have data in Excel is, if you choose to add a new item in your checklist, you simply have to go to the last row and hit tab and Excel will add an extra row to the table. It will automatically extend the yes, no options also. So you can select the yes, no again without having to set up the validation. I'll talk a little bit more about tables later on in the video. Now let's go to the skill number two. Mario's pipe business has been blooming, but he has a problem. Every time he fixes the pipes at a business or a household, he would like to send them an invoice. But he doesn't have the time to prepare those invoices manually in Excel all the time. Do you know that if you go to the file, new, you can access thousands of templates that are free and available for you. So you can search for invoice and Excel is gonna show you many, many invoice templates. So let's pick something that Mario would be happy to use. Once you select the template, just hit create and Excel is going to make everything for you in a brand new file. Most of these templates will have easy customization. So you can change the words, addresses and costs and everything. And it will calculate the relevant stuff for you. When you are done, you simply have to save and email this invoice to your client. 
If you are not happy with the template, you can even change things in it. For example, I like this template, but we can see that it doesn't have the Mario's official logo. So let's delete these things and insert a picture of our business. You can position this wherever you want, size this and likewise change some of these other things. And when you're happy, you can go to file, save as and give it a name like invoice template. And instead of saving it as a workbook, you can use this option and save it as Excel template. This is going to save the invoice template in your custom office templates folder. And next time you want to create such an invoice, you just go to file new and click on personal and your invoice template will be here. So just tap on that and ta-da, we have our pipe invoice ready for us to use. In case of Bob the Builder, he already overheard that you need to use tables when structuring the data. So he is maintaining a table that has all the upcoming building works in Sunflower Valley. He has been maintaining all this data for all the upcoming bookings and now he wants to know which bookings are not yet cancelled and which ones are coming up in December 2023. You can do that kind of things quickly by using the filters on your data. Simply select the table and then go to home, sort and filter and click on the filter button. You can also use the shortcut control shift L. And once the filters are set, you can filter down the data as you want. So I'm going to filter all the bookings and select the month as December 2023. Now Bob can see which are the bookings that are there in the month of December. When you have a date column, you can also use the date column and filter for all the events that are coming up next week or next month or next quarter as well. Let's take a look at all the bookings that are happening in the next quarter. This is going to show me all the Jan, Feb and March values as I am currently in November 2023. Bob also want to know how many bookings are there in total. We can go to a cell and then write the word total bookings. To calculate the total bookings, you can use the count A function. Count A will count everything in your data. So count A and then select either description or the date column. And when you hit enter on that, you will see that there are total 60 bookings. But of course, some of these bookings are cancelled. So how do we know what are the non-cancelled bookings? You can use total active bookings. And this one is instead of count A, you can use the count ifs function and then select, for example, the status column and then type the words booked. So even though Bob has 60 bookings, only 52 of them are active, eight of them are canceled. There are many other functions in Excel that can solve day to day problems for Bob quickly. And most of these are simple and easy enough to learn. If you want to learn more about the essential Excel formulas, I have got a recommendation for you at the end of this video. Stay tuned for that. Before we look at the fourth skill, let me introduce you to Connect Team. Connect Team is an all-in-one employee app for deskless workforce. It is an easy to use app to manage all your day-to-day -day employee needs as a small business person. For example, Monica can use the checklist feature to create a cookie checklist so that Joey can stay on top of the job every time. And Bob can use the employee scheduling feature to manage all the upcoming appointments for his team. And if there is a change of date or a cancellation, he can update the schedules with just a tap on his phone. How awesome is that? Connect Team is free for teams of up to 10 employees. Download the app today and set your team for success. Please use the link in the description below or in the pinned comment to get your Connect Team account. Thank you Connect Team for sponsoring this video. Do 
Dwight has been maintaining a member weight log for all the members of his gym. He has been tracking everybody's weight since the start of year 2023. There is a lot of data and Dwight wants to know what is the average weight of each of his members every month of this year. You can use pivot tables to quickly build answers for these kind of questions. Just select your data and go to insert, click on pivot table. Click OK and Excel will add a new worksheet where you can construct the pivot table. You can use the fields area here to construct the pivot. As Dwight wants to see one member per row here and one month per column here, simply drag the member to the rows area and date to the columns area. Excel will automatically group these dates into months and now select the weight and put it into the values area. Don't worry, Andy is not really 800 pounds. It's just that Excel is adding all the weights. Now right click on any of these numbers and change the summary from sum to average. Right click again and go to number format and set it in the number with just one decimal point. And he can now see what is the average weight of each of their members over the course of the year. For example, Angela started the year with 129 pounds and ended at 119 pounds. Wow, a 10 pound loss. So those are the four skills. Using tables to structure and maintain your data. Using templates to speed up your business processes. Using filters and simple formulas to calculate the values or look at the data you want. And finally, using pivot tables to understand your business data. But what if Dwight wants a little more out of his data? Do you know that we can use Microsoft Excel formulas to get more out of your data easily and quickly? Here is a video that talks about the top 10 Excel formulas. Check it out. And don't forget to check out the Connect Team app to manage your employee workforce. Check out the link in the video description below. I'll catch you somewhere else. Bye.